out as a higher boiling point. So as you begin to eat, as the liquid turns to vapor, when you get to this upper region and the temperature correlates to that of the upper region, it enters into the Levy condenser. As it enters into the Levy condenser, the reintroduction of a cool of a cooling water it should cool that vapor and the vapor enters here in form of liquid. So it is used to separate two or more components one, then the boiling point difference must be greater than 10 degrees Celsius. Then let's talk about evaporation. Evaporation, it is used to recover solid solutes from a solution. It is used to, to recover solid solutes from a solution. Even in your separative techniques, yeah, I said separative technique, that's physical change. When you have salt to water, you know that you're definitely going to have what? A salt solution. You have a salt solution. It is a reversible process. You have a salt solution. How do you get how do you get salt back from this? Is by subjecting it to what? Evaporation. So by the time you subject it to evaporation, you have you recover your salt back. So what it means is that it is used to separate solid solute from a solution and it is employed in salt making industry. So industry that makes salt use evaporation. Then separating funnel. Separating funnel is another separating technique that is used to, to, to separate mixtures with respect to what? Density. So, and it is employed when you have two miss, uh, two immiscible, take note of that word, two immiscible, immiscible liquids. Example, water and kerosene. So you have to separate water and kerosene. Here, you have to use no other method than separating funnel because in the separating funnel you have something like this where you have something being connected like this so when you introduce both into this separate separating funnel what happens is that the less dense substance stays up while the denser substance stays down so in this scenario water comes down because water is denser than kerosene so kerosene remains here so water gets in here and kerosene remains here that is the mode of separation so it separates two substances two immiscible liquids in order of their density you can see every method has its own method of separation which is very important to it like in the case of separating funnel it separates on the basis of what density Take note of that. Then the next one is the next one is chromatography. In the case of chromatography, it is used to separate complex mixtures, complex mixtures in order of the difference in their what migration. You know, two two things that are very important in chromatography separation method of separation is Migration and what? Affinity. Take note of that. So the substances migrate with respect to their what? Affinity. What am I saying? If you get a, just like your ink, for example, you have a porous paper, let it be spotted. This spot, as it is spotted here, and you bring a solution containing, let's say, ethanol. You bring the solution containing it. This is a porous paper. Solution is containing ethanol. Where you have it spotted with ink, this ink that is spotted has so many substances in it. Let's say substance A, substance B, and substance C. So in the case where it is spotted like this, and every substance has different affinity for a particular solvent. Let's say in this scenario, the affinity of A is the most. Followed by more. So this one is the most. Now, when I mean the affinity of these substances for this 
uh, liquid, which is ethanol. This one has the highest, followed by this, followed by this. So when they, when you bring this proof paper that is potted close to this solvent, because this one has the highest affinity, the rate of migration of this will be more. It will be the most with respect to this thing. Are you getting that now? Then followed by this one. Let's say your A migrate towards this side. Then your B migrate towards this side. B, you can see now. It's also, it is more, but this one is more than this. Then let's say your C migrate towards this side. You can see the way you have succeeded in separating A, B, C, A, B, C by virtue of what? Chromatography. Chromatography. So here, you can cut this off at this level, then you know that like if you have A component, you can cut this one off at this, com at this point, you know you have B component. You can cut this one off at this point, you know you have C component. So the last one I'll be talking about is precipitation. Precipitation. In the case of precipitation, it is used to, to separate a solid into different uh, to separate a solid in two miscible liquids. What am I saying? Precipitation is used to separate a solid in two miscible liquids. So that means you have a solid, you have a solid then plus two miscible, miscible liquids. So what am I saying? How is the separation possible? Now, when you have, let me cite a case. If I have ion 2 tetrasulfate 6, I have ethanol, and I also have water. So these are three substances here. Take note, ion 2 tetrasulfate 6 is soluble in water, but it is not soluble in ethanol. So in this situation, when Ion 2 tetrasulfate 6 is in, is in water. That means if ethanol is now introduced, ethanol is introduced into a solution of ion 2 in water because of the fact that I said. Ion 2 is soluble in water, but it's insoluble in ethanol. So when you have this ethanol introduced into this, this one will be precipitated, it will come out of the solution in form of what? Precipitate, simply because it is not soluble in ethanol. And then it can now be removed by the process of what? Filtration. You can see that that means in even precipitation, that means if you are asked, that how can a mixture of ethanol, ion 2, tetrasulfate 6, and water be separated? Now, when you have ion 2, tetrasulfate 6 in water, by introducing ethanol, this one, you want to separate if this one is your substance of interest. So just introduce ethanol into a solution containing ion 2, sulfate, and water. By the time you introduce ethanol, ethanol into it, because this one is insoluble in ethanol, it will come out of the solution as a precipitate, which you can now pass through a process known as filtration to remove this one. So that is how it is done. So I believe you've been able to have an integral explanation on separative techniques. more on chromatography because it has diverse applications so because of the fact that it is used to separate complex mixtures you have in the separation of dyes you have it in in uh, colors you also have it in proteins you also have it in ink you also have it in, 
you, are, you also have it in leaves. So these ones are the major points or applications of chromatography. So anything that has to do with complex mixtures, especially the ink. So you have it. So anytime you see them, you, you come across this substance, this substance, this substance, this substance, this substance. Just know that the only way to separate this kind of complex mixture is by employing chromatographic method. Then let's see some other examples. It should be noted that the presence of impurities in a solid lowers the melting point and increases the boiling point. Take note of that because even it's, if you check UTME 2013, question number 2, and also UTME 2015, question number 7, you will see that each time you have presence of impurities, presence of impurities lowers the melting point. Take note of that. It lowers the melting point and increases the boiling point. Take note of that. talk about common UTME questions centered on this topic. The first one says that sugar is separated from its mixture by... So how can sugar be separated from its mixture? Based on the separative techniques explained earlier, you should know